Okay, here we have the notes on intercepts, which we started to talk about a bit in class. We didn't have quite as much time as I wanted to. But you should have gotten that the y-intercept is where a graph crosses the y-axis. Um, it is going to be all the points on the y-axis are 0, comma y, um, because every point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of 0. If you think about it, you're not going left or right at all. You're only going up or down on the y-axis. Okay, in contrast, the x-intercept is where a graph crosses the x-axis. And now, if you think of all the points on the x-axis, they all have a y-coordinate of 0. So each line has a unique x and a unique y intercept, like the unique combination of the two. Some of them might share um, an x intercept, but their y intercepts will be different. Make sure to write your intercepts as points. These are two separate points on the graph, not one point. And you'll see that as I work through some examples. So I'm going to work through more of the algebraic way of looking at this. But before that, we're going to start here. So this is similar to what we did in class, and what I'd like you to do is push pause and write down the x-intercept and y-intercept of the red line, and then the x-intercept and y-intercept of the black line. So please push pause now and write those answers down, then come back and check to see if you got them right. Okay, I marked the points here for the black line. Um, it's over negative 4, comma 0. That's where it crosses the x-axis. And the y-intercept, uh, you could be a little bit off for me, uh, but I had a 0, 5.5 5 for where it crosses the y-axis. Again, the x-intercept for the red line, negative 7, 0, and the y-intercept at 0, 6. Please be careful, again, these are two separate points. And what people tend to do is write this, for example, for the red, they'll write negative 7, 6. Negative 7, 6 is this point way up here, which isn't even on the line. So make sure you're describing the point on the graph that where the line crosses the x-axis and where it crosses the y. Now we're going to look at this one. So calculate the x and y intercepts, use them to plot the graph. Now some of you may use that pattern we saw uh, from the Desmos exploration, and some of you may look at it if you understand what the x and the y intercept are. So understand that the x-intercept is asking, okay, what is x going to be when y is 0? And I'll go to the example here. So again, I'm saying, okay, here's my equation. There's a whole bunch of different x and y combinations that can make this equal 15. But I want to know when y is 0, because that'll be the point on the x-axis. When y is 0, what will x be? So I plugged in 0 for y, and I solved. So x equals 5. Well, x equals 5 when you plugged in what for y? 0. So here's the point, 5 comma 0 here. For the y-intercept, all the points on the y-intercept, or y-axis, have an x-coordinate of 0. So I'm basically kind of asking my equation, okay, what is y have to be in order for this equation to equal 15? If x is 0, what is y going to have to be? So I plugged 0 in for x this time. I solve for y, and I got y equals 3. So that goes in the spot of a y-coordinate. Well, y was 3 when x was what? When x was 0. And you can see I plotted 0, comma 3 here. And then to plot the graph, you're just going to connect the two lines, the two points, excuse me. Please make sure to use arrows on these because this does go on forever. And we're going to get into that more tomorrow. So over here, I'd like you to try these on your own. I'd like you to find the x and y intercept of each of these equations, plot the intercepts, and then connect them to form the line. So please push pause now and give that a try. Okay, over here you'll see the answers. So to get the x-intercept, I plugged in 0 for y. See, this is the same equation, 0 for y. I solved for x. So x was 3 when y was 0. For the y-intercept, there's the equation, except I plugged in 0 for x. I said if 0 is x, what is y going to be? And I solved. So hopefully you'll see this is some of that chapter 3 and 4 material that we're going over and using again. So I got y is negative 18, so I put that in the y-coordinate spot and said, well, y was negative 18 when x was what? When x was 0. And I plotted those. Now you can see in my graph here, I put a 1 and a 2 here because on the x-axis I made each block worth 1. And then on the y-axis, I was counting by twos. I actually probably should make that a negative two, just to, since it is in the negative 
part of the y-axis. Okay, so I did that here to show you that I was counting by twos on the y-axis and by ones on the x-axis. When we do this in class, I'm going to assume you're counting by one unless you note it like I did here. So over here, again, this doesn't change. Even though the equation looks different, it's not different in the way you calculate it. So for the x-intercept, I want to know what happens when y is zero. So I put in zero for y and I solved. For the y-intercept, I want to know what happens when x is zero. So I plugged in zero and I solved. I plotted the points, I color-coded them, and then connected them here. All right, one more, it has the fraction in there. The work hasn't changed for this. Um, it's just kind of using a lot of the material we used in 3 and 4. So please push pause and attempt to find the x and y intercept and graph this problem. Okay, here is my work again. Um, you can push pause at any time if I move too quickly. So the I plugged in y, 0 for y, and I solved. So I added 6 to both sides. That's how I got here. I multiplied both sides by 5. That's how I got here. And I got, then I solved for x and got x was 10. So x is 10 when y was what? When y was 0. Okay, and over here I plugged in 0 for x and I solved and I got 0, negative 6. I color-coded my answers for you on the graph and then connected those. So that concludes our notes on x and y intercepts. Again, remember x and y intercepts are where a, an equation or of a line crosses the x-axis and where does it cross the y-axis? Two separate points. And we're going to work with that more in class tomorrow.